teens and welcome to a video on the exponential graph, our final graph of the functions and graphs. Um, I've done one about straight lines, uh, about um, the parabola, the hyperbola, and now we're on the exponential graph. Okay, so this is the last one. I realized with my previous video, I haven't... Um, I haven't spoken, uh, yeah, I haven't explained how to find the equation of a hyperbola, but I thought I'm going to skip it here as well um, in the exponential graph, and then I will make a video just on how to find the equations of all the graphs. Okay, so that you've got one video that consists just about how to find the equations when a graph is given to you or drawn for you. Okay, so now let's look at the exponential graph. Your cookie cutter mold, as I always say, is y is equal to a times b to the power x plus q. All right. Now, what do all of these variables stand for? Okay. So please note also that the a and the b could have replaced could have been replaced with the r and the s. It doesn't really matter. It's just the position of where it is in the in the equation. I just used a times b to the power x because most of the textbooks use it like this. Okay, so let's start with the back, this plus q. It's the vertical shift up and down. I think you've realized now with all our graphs, even with the straight line, that that q, the back side, is the vertical shift. Okay, then the asymptote. This is also the asymptote. So the same with the hyperbola. Um, the exponential graph also has an asymptote, but only one. The hyperbola has got two, two asymptotes, two lines of symmetry, two everything. But the exponential graph has only one asymptote. So hopefully you know about the asymptote now and it won't be as big of a shock of what it is. Okay, so remember it's always a straight line that the graph leans towards but never touches. Okay, the B over here represents the shape of the graph. Um, and I'm going to explain to you a little bit closer to the time um, that why do I want you to be able to interpret the graphs um, is because we don't always give you values. And I say to you, draw a graph where B is bigger than zero, Q is smaller than zero, and A is a positive number. Then you have to be able to interpret it and draw a little rough sketch of how that graph would look. So that's why I really want you to understand every little bit inside this equation okay so the b shows the shape of the graph whether it is um it's going to show whether it's going to go up like that or whether it's going to come down like that okay so that b value is going to show you that and the a value is going to show you whether it's been reflected or not okay so um it also multiplies your graph so it makes it go steeper or not so steep um, but it also represents whether it has been reflected around the x-axis or not. Okay, but I'll, ha I'll show you as we go along. Okay, so just things to note, the exponential graph has only one asymptote, and the asymptote is indicated with the backside of the Q over there. All right, so now I want to show you all the different graphs um, and the shapes that you can get. Sorry. Let me just draw a nice X and Y axis over here. This would be your Y axis and your X axis. And if you do a few, then you'll see it is actually quite easy. Okay, so Y is equal to 2 over X plus 1. Let's do a graph like that. Okay, your asymptote, first of all, you need to go and indicate it. And there, I would say, is where it cuts the y-axis at 1. And you label it y is equal to, not 0, sorry, <laughs> y is equal to 1. Okay, now your graph is either going to go up like that, or it's going to come down like that. And I always say, if the a has a 2 value, so it's not a fraction, if it is a full number, a number bigger than zero, then your graph is going to come in small to high. And how do I remember that? I remember it always like this. A two is a small little number. It can fit underneath there. Okay, so if it is a number, so if A is bigger than z one, sorry, so bigger than one, then 
it will uh, come in low to high. I hope that makes sense with my own little wording. Okay, so it will come up low and go up high. All right, now let's draw this blue graph. Can you see this has got a big space? So I always say to write a fraction there, it needs big space. So y is equal to a half to the power x plus 1. Okay, so the blue graph will look like that. And then why is it when it comes up high to low? Because the a value is a fraction. Okay, so if, sorry, a um, I'm going to write it like this, sorry, so if A is smaller than 1 but bigger than 0, then it will come from up high to low. Okay, so those are your two graphs and it will be always leaning towards the um, asymptote y is equal to one but never touches so this one also leans towards it carries on and on and will lean to get closer and this one is just the other way around okay so i hope that makes sense so if it is a two if the a's value is a two it comes from low up high and if the value is a fraction it goes from high to low okay so now what about a negative Let's do another scenario. What if y is equal to negative 4 over x? Sorry. Um, no, now I'm busy with the hyperbola. Sorry. Um, negative 4 to the power x minus 2. Let's do like that. Okay. So if you have to draw a rough sketch of that, you will say your first asymptote is where y is negative 2. So I'm going to draw it in over there. Okay, now this graph, if it didn't have a negative over there, it would have looked something like this. So remember, because it's a 4, it will come up low to high. Why? Because you can fit a small little 4 in there. But now, because it had a negative in front, let me bring that back. Because it had a negative in front, the graph is going to be reflected. Oh, my word. Sorry, wait. Let me redraw this graph. Oh, sorry for that. It must come up from your asymptote and somewhere it will cross. And you will just have to um, find the coordinates of where it will be crossing. Okay, sorry. Because it is a 4, it comes up low to high. Now, because there is a negative in the front, it will be reflected upon your asymptote over here. So if a reflection would be done, it will look like that. And this is your y is equal to negative 4 to the power x minus 2 graph. Okay, so this is when it was a positive, And this is when it is a negative. Okay, so I'm just going to show one more again. I'm going to draw an X and a Y axis. And then I'm going to give an equation. Y is equal to a half X. Oh man, sorry. <laughs> a half to the power X, um, let's say, minus 2. So the first things first, we're going to draw our asymptote at negative 2. y is equal to negative 2. Now, a half x, remember, it has to come up high and always then leans towards. Why does it come up high? Because I need to fit a big fat fraction in there. Okay. <laughs> All right. And now, if I have a different color, let's change this, sorry, to blue. No, hello. <laughs> All right, there we go. So now, what if we've got y is equal to negative a half to the power x minus 2? So because it is a negative, it's going to be a reflection upon your symmetry. Okay, your line of, oh no, not your symmetry, your asymptotes. 
sorry okay so it's a negative so it's a reflection and it will look like this Okay, if you put a number in front like a negative 2, the whole graph just stretches. So you don't have to stress about that. As long as you know if it's a negative number, it's a reflection. If it's a positive, it will be above the line like that. Okay, or above your asymptote. All right. Um, yeah, so basically that is it. Um, I will make a video on how to find the equation as well. Um, I just want to bring it up here with the summary. Um, if you want to copy that, um, that would be very good. Um, yeah, just remember one asymptote if the B value is um, a, do, 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 a, a number between, <laughs> sorry, now I'm stuttering. Um, okay, so if the B is a value between, um, uh, if it is a fraction, if you want to see it like that, it would come up high to low. And if it is a number bigger than one, like a whole number, it will come up low to high. All right. So that's basically the exponential graph. And then I'll make a video on how to find the equations. And I hope it helped, especially I'm trying to make videos um, or for students who've missed like a lesson, who've missed the exponential graph explanation and for them to recap on it. All right. But hope you have a wonderful day and um, I'll speak to you soon again. Okay. Cheers. Bye. Tens, welcome to the last video which is on functions and graphs and we are going to look at the exponential graph. Okay, um, I realized in my previous video I didn't show how to find the equation of the graphs but I think I'm going to make a separate video on how to find the equations of all three of those graphs. Um, the straight line, I can redo that one, straight line, all four graphs in the straight line, the hyperbola, the exponential graph as well as the parabola. All right, so your cookie cutter mold is y is equal to a times b to the power x plus q. All right, like with the others, this q is a vertical shift up and down. And unlike the hyperbola that had two um, asymptotes, the exponential graph has only one asymptote. Okay, so this will show you the vertical shift up and down as well as, sorry, the asymptote. Um, this B over here, it could have been represented with anything. It could have been A times um, R to the power X. I just used A times B to the power X plus Q. And that's how it's mostly used in the uh, textbooks. All right. Um, so this B shows the shape of the graph. And I'm going to show you now um, how, how um, exponentially it grows or how steep it grows if you want to say that um, um, but you don't have to really stress about that because your coordinates will lead you as to how to draw it and then this a over here basically represents will indicate whether the graph has a reflection around the asymptote okay and the asymptote here is y is equal to q and i represented it as y is equal to q Sorry, the dogs, I'm trying to get rid of all the noise, <laughs> but then there's noise all around me. Okay, um, this Q over here is your asymptote. Okay, like with the um, hyperbola, luckily you've been introduced to asymptotes and you are well aware how to handle them. Okay, all right, so like I said here, things to note, the exponential graph has only one asymptote and the Q value is your asymptote. All right, now. Let's quickly look at an equation. Y is equal to um, 2 to the power x plus 4. Now you're going to ask me, but where is this number over here? That number is then a 1 that is represented with it. So the whole graph or the expon exponent um, is multiplied with a 1. So we sometimes it's not written as 2 um two numbers there okay there's no multiplication of a number with two to the power x so if there's no number just note that it is one but you basically don't have to stress about it so we know that here sits a positive number okay otherwise they would have to indicate it with a negative all right so now with this i always say start from the back you've got your x and your y axis your y and your x and then please indicate your asymptotes so now we know that y is 4 that is our one 
asymptote given there. And you get a mark for that. All right. Now with the exponential graph, if there's a 2, it's going to come in small and go up high. Okay, I'm going to show you now. So if the A has a value bigger than 1, then the graph will come in low and go up high. The way I remember it is that there's just a little space over here and a little 2 can go in there. Okay, another way I could have given it to you is y is equal to a half to the power x plus 2. So now you're going to draw your graph. Your y asymptote is 2. And then because it's a half, so a it has a value 